Good morning. On this first Sunday in the season of Advent, we greet everyone in the name of the Savior as we prepare to celebrate his birth. Our visitors are especially welcome, and we invite visitors and members to please sign the friendship registers that are there in each of the pews. Please pass them down the pews so that everyone would have an opportunity to sign this morning. We do extend a special thanks to the handbells uh, for playing and also for our band for providing music for our service this morning. Several members of Fairview yesterday morning put up our Advent star. And during our liturgy, if you're playing, paying very close attention, you'll see the star will come on right as we sing the first song in the Advent liturgy. So I know you'll be looking for that uh, this morning. A word of explanation about two components of our service. First, the call to worship during, ad, during um, Advent will in, include the lighting of candles on the Advent wreath. It will also include this year a responsive reading, which is printed in your bulletins, and the singing of our choir. So I wanted you to know the sequence of things. It will be the same each Sunday in Advent so that you will fully participate in this very beautiful tradition. First, the choir sings, then the responsive reading, followed by the lighting of the Advent candle, followed by the choir singing a second time, and concluding with a spoken prayer. Gale newer members will light the first candle this morning, the candle of hope at the appropriate time. Also, in our Advent liturgy, we'll be singing the Hosanna uh, towards the end of the liturgy. We do this traditionally here at Fairview and Tiffany with the men starting and singing with the lower brass, and then the women will echo singing with the upper brass. The Hosanna is one of the most beautiful and inspiring tunes that we can sing in this season of the year. One further announcement, a children and adult performers in the Christmas play this year are asked to meet in the left transept. Uh, that your left would be over here, right? Yeah, that's your left. Um, following the worship this morning for a, a brief meeting um, with Betty Ferguson. As we move to our prayer time, uh, we seek our Lord's guidance and strength as we intercede for ourselves, for others, and for the world. Among our church family and friends, we want to lift up Edna Teague, who had been hospitalized. I understand that she has now been moved to Homestead Hills. Uh, we also want to continue to pray for Pam Tatum with her rehabilitation in Charlotte. She is planning to return to Winston-Salem uh, this week, and we hope that will work out. Also, we pray for Eileen Petticord, who was moved to a health care facility in Hickory. Um, Leslie Cox, who would be here helping to lead worship, pulled a muscle in her, in her back this morning. And so keep Leslie in, in, her, in your prayers. Let us also continue to remember Catherine Hooser, Bob Minish, Alden Dull, and Marcus Peg Van Horn, and others of the church family who need God's healing presence. We will also pray for those affected by the fires in western North Carolina and other states and continue to pray for our nation and for the leadership of our country in this time of transition. Are there other prayer requests that we would have this morning? Let us then go to our Lord in a time of prayer. Let us pray. Patient God, May we be as patient as you have been with us. We know that all things will happen in your time according to your plan, O oh Lord. As we begin this season of watchfulness and anticipation, bless us amid the many tasks and distractions that lie ahead of us. Create in our hearts a holy space where we may wait for you. God of restoration, restore in body, mind, and spirit those named today Edna, Pam, Eileen, Leslie, 
Catherine, Bob Minish, Alden, Ann, Peg. Embrace them and others of our congregation, O Lord, in your healing arms and sustain them in your grace and strength. Protecting, Lord, continue to be with those affected by the dangerous fires in the western part of our state and in other states. Keep safe those whose homes are near the fires and protect those who are fighting the fires, putting their own lives in danger. Keep them all from harm, we pray. God of all the nations, we pray for our nation in this time of uncertainty and transition. Give wisdom and heart to those who will have the burden of leading our country. Bring a unity that is very much needed, O Lord. Give us true hope for a better tomorrow. O Lord, we wait and pray for the coming day of peace and wholeness which surely will come as you have willed. Amen. for the one promised in Scripture. And he will be called Wonderful Counselor. We wait for the one who will bring answers to a world filled with questions. And he will be called Wonderful Counselor. We wait for the one who can heal what has been wounded and mend what has been broken. And he will be called Wonderful We wait for the one who can renew our weary spirits and ignite our hearts with hope. Today we light the first candle, the candle of hope, reminding us that Jesus was sent not only to be our Savior, but also to be our wonderful counselor, the one who hears our prayers with compassion and who offers guidance when we seek it. As we begin the season of Advent, we remember that our rest can be found in God and through the gift of God's Son, our hope is forever restored.
Let us pray. Gracious Lord, we thank you for your promises and for your coming to earth as our wonderful counselor. As we begin our Advent journey, help us to know the abiding hope that comes from knowing that you will keep your promises to us. May we radiate that hope in everything we say and do. We pray this in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. We are now invited to turn to the liturgy for Advent found on page 49 in the front of our book of worship, the liturgy for the season of Advent. Let us stand as we pray our, our liturgy together. You heavens, the glory of the Lord will be revealed and all people together will see it. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. Rejoice greatly, shout for joy. See your King is coming to you. He is righteous and bring salvation. you the Lord God of Israel you came to the help of your people and have set them free you have raised up for us a mighty savior a descendant of your servant David you promised through your holy prophets long ago that you would save us from our enemies from the power of all those who hate us you have shown the mercy promised to our ancestors With a solemn oath to our ancestor Abraham, you promised to rescue us from our enemies and allow us to serve you without fear, so that we might be holy and righteous before you all the days of our life. By your tender mercy, you caused the bright dawn of salvation to rise on us. Be a light to those who sit in darkness and in the shadow of death. To guide our feet into the way of peace. The voice of the messenger echoes from the desert, calling us to prepare the way of the Lord and to make a straight path on which he may come. Let us confess our sins so that our crooked ways will be made straight and the rough ways smooth. You may be seated. Gracious Lord Jesus, you come to with the good news of salvation, but too often we fail to notice. You come to us day by day, yet we close the doors of our hearts when it seems convenient to do things our own way. We ignore your presence and your leadership. We have failed to act justly, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with our God. Forgive us, merciful Lord. May we live so that the world will know that you have come. Amen. Through John the baptizer, we hear the Lord's promise. Turn away from your sins, and God will forgive your sins.
eternal God, ruler of all ages. Graciously, you come to us in order that we might come to you through the merit of Jesus Christ, strengthened by the Holy Spirit. Help us and all your children to respond to the call of your gospel with faith, love, and hope. God of faith, you created humanity to serve and praise you, and even when we rebelled against you, you promised to send a Savior to redeem us from our sins. Strengthen our faith in your saving work through Christ as you chose the people of Israel to hear the promise of redemption through the prophets. May people today believe in your goodwill for all that you have made. God of love, you fulfilled your promise of a redeemer in the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Grant us the gifts of the Holy Spirit that we may share your love with the sick and the afflicted, with the poor and the homeless, with the victims of injustice and discrimination, and with all who are experiencing times of trouble. God of hope, you comfort us through our Savior's promise to return in glory at the end of time. As we await the coming of the Prince of Peace, let us not despair. We long for you to inspire all the nations and peoples of the world to turn to cooperation and nurture rather than to hatred and destruction. God of faith, love, and hope, to you and to you alone we pray. For you are our God, the only God, forever and ever. Amen. Let us stand. kept the promise you made to our ancestors and have come to the help of your servant people. You remember to show mercy to Abraham and Sarah and to all their descendants forever. We praise you, Lord. You are enthroned in glory, yet you came and continue to come for all who will receive you. 
We praise you for you are good and your mercy endures forever. Let us greet one another in Christ's name. In this season of Advent, we prepare to receive the Christ child into our lives, into our hearts. And in response to that wonderful news, let us now bring forth our offerings to the Lord. Oh Lord, as we begin this season of preparation and anticipation, we give thanks for the gift of Jesus. Bless the gifts that we bring today, that we give back to you. May they share your love for those who come to hear about the Christ child. May they reach those who need food, shelter, and clothing. May they touch those who need healing. May they embrace those who need to experience your unconditional love. This we pray in the name of Jesus Christ, the one who is our hope. Amen.
May be seated. Thank you, gentlemen. It's time for our children's message. I would invite the children to come up front and spend a few moments with Liz. this morning. I'm so glad you're here. Well, today is a special Sunday because it is the first, say it again, the first day of Advent, the first Sunday in Advent. What on earth does Advent mean? Yeah, I'm wondering how many of our adults know that. I'm not sure. Well, it, it is like a beginning, like that. Advent is a Latin word that means coming. So something's coming. What's coming? Yeah. Yeah. And how do we celebrate that? What's coming? December. Christmas. Oh, Christmas is coming. Yeah, Christmas is coming. Exactly, and so Christmas is coming. When you think of Christmas coming, what do you think of happening? What happens when Christmas is coming? What? Well, Jesus gets born at Christmas. That's his birthday. What else? Is there anything in our sanctuary that makes us think Christmas is coming? Look behind you, perhaps. Oh, yeah, we have a burning candle. And what do we have way up there? Star. Uh, the big star, the, ad, the Advent star. And the burning candle is on our Advent wreath. So we're going to stand up. We don't usually get to do this. We're going to do it. You ready? Yeah, we're going to stand up. And we're going to walk back here. you got to come back here with me, okay? Oh, yeah. Here we go. And we're going to look at our Advent wreath this morning. Okay? What color is all this down here? Green. Okay. But this part is green. green. And green is to make us think of, of eternal life. Because evergreens don't lose their leaves or anything, right? Those other leaves die and we have to rake them up, right? Scott and I did a lot of that yesterday. But a whole lot of that. But the evergreens stay green. Just like life goes on and on and on. And it's in what shape? Oh, uh, yeah. And the circle never ends, does it? Just keeps going round and round and round, just like eternal life. It never ends. And then we have all these candles. And I bet you guys remember what our first one stands for. Say it louder. Perfect. Yeah. We've been hearing a lot about hope this morning, haven't we? And so the first candle is the hand, candle of hope. Um, next week, we're going to light two candles, the candle of hope and the second candle. Do you know what the second one is? The hope. We have hope, and then we have peace. Peace. And then what's the next one? You just said it. <laughs> Joy. Exactly. And then the last one is Yeah? Love. Love. So we have hope, peace, joy, and love. So the middle one, we don't... The middle of them, we don't like till Christmas 
day. And Sunday is on a Christmas. It, I mean, excuse me, Christmas is on a Sunday this year. Christmas is on Sunday. You know what that means? That means we'll have church Christmas Day. We really will. Yeah, at our house, uh, the grandchildren don't know this yet, but at our house, the, we're going to see what Santa brought, and then we're going to come to church. And then we'll open all the rest of the presents later. Yeah. So we have church uh, Christmas. It's a Christmas candle, exactly. You're right. That's the Christmas candle for Christ being the light of the world. So let's see if we can remember. And let's say this together. Because Jesus loves us, we have hope. Let's see, everybody can say it. Because Jesus loves us, we have hope. Because Jesus loves us, we have peace. Because Jesus loves us, we have joy. Because Jesus loves us, we have love. And Jesus is the light of the world. So when we look at this every Sunday of Advent, we can remember all of those wonderful things that Jesus brings to us. Let's pray. Thank you so much, Jesus, for coming to be the light of our world. Thank you for hope, peace, joy, and love. Thank you for loving us. In Jesus' name, amen. And I have something down here. Come on back down. And we have a shout out to Dorcas Hooser this morning because she gave me something really cool to help us all remember what about Advent. And it has a pen, it's a pen and it has all the candles and hope, peace, joy, and love. And you and the Christ candle that Christ came. So you can wear that in Advent to remember those things. And then I have some red and green things in here, and you can pick one. Oh, he's going eeny, meeny, miny, mo. Oh, my goodness. for coming up. morning. Our scripture reading is from Matthew chapter 24 verses 36 through 44. But about that day and hour no one knows, neither the angels of heaven nor the Son, but only the Father. For as the days of Noah were, so will be the coming of the Son of Man. For as in those days before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage until the day Noah entered the ark. And they knew nothing until the flood came and swept them all away. So too will be the coming of the Son of Man. Then too will be in the field one will be taken, and one will be left. Two women will be grinding meal together. One will be taken, and one will be left. Keep awake, therefore, for you do not know on what day your Lord is coming. But understand this, if the owner of the house had known in what part of the night the thief was coming, he would have stayed awake and would not have let his house be broken into. Therefore, you also must be ready. 
for the Son of Man is coming at an unexpected hour. The second reading is from Romans chapter 13, verses 11 through 14. Besides this, you know what time it is, how it is now the moment for you to wake from sleep, for salvation is nearer to us now than when we became believers. For night is far gone, the day is near. Let us then lay aside the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. Let us live honorably as in the day, not in reveling and drunkenness, not as in debauchery and licentiousness, not in quarreling and jealousy. Instead, put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to gratify its desires. The Lord bless the reading of his word. Now, let us stand and sing hymn number 262, Come a Long Expected Jesus. Please be seated. The sermon text is the Old Testament passage for today. From the book of the prophet Isaiah, I will be reading from the second chapter, verses 1 through 5. The word that Isaiah, son of Amos, saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem. In days to come, the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established as the highest of the mountains and shall be raised above the hills. All the nations shall stream to it. Many peoples shall come and say, Come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob, that he may teach us his ways and that we may walk in his paths. For out of Zion shall go forth instruction and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. He shall judge between the nations. He shall arbitrate for many peoples. They shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nations shall not lift up sword against nation. Neither shall they learn war anymore. O house of Jacob, come, let us walk in the light of the Lord. Advent is a season that seeks to impact our lives in a special way. Our culture starts before the season of Advent, reminding us that Christmas is coming. The myriad of reminders practically shout out at us that we need to prepare early 
seems earlier than usual every year. Prepare to shop and to shop and to shop some more. Christmas gifts, Christmas lights, cards, decorations, toys, clothes, food, and the list goes on and on and on. For the community of faith of which we are, Advent is more pointedly a season that reminds us of the prophecies of the coming of the Messiah, like those found in the book of Isaiah. Many of us have looked at these prophecies as in our study of Isaiah during our Wednesday Bible studies. These prophecies were fulfilled in the birth of Jesus, the Son of God, on that first Christmas in Bethlehem of Judea. There are also prophecies in Isaiah of the second coming of our Lord, when Jesus will return and usher in a new age on earth. In our passage for today, the prophet Isaiah gives us a vision of that new age and what it will look like. The house of God on the mountain of God will be a place where all people will eagerly want to go to worship and to be taught the ways of the Lord. But is this just a vision of the end times, we might ask? Is it possible that even today people will want to come to the house of God, the church, to holy gatherings and sanctuaries such as this one, to hear about God, to be taught God's word, to work and serve in the name of the Lord? Isaiah's vision reminds us of the familiar proverb that states, and this is Proverbs 29, verse 18, where there is no vision, the people perish. Or, to put it in a more contemporary language from the message, if the people can't see what God is doing, they stumble all over themselves. But when they attend to what he reveals, they are most Many of us will turn on the television this Christmas season because there are many familiar Christmas stories that we want to watch, that we have has been part of our tradition even in this time of year. And one of the classics is Charles Dickens' A Christmas Carol. We know that story, and it's a wonderful, beautiful story. And at the beginning of this story, it is clear that the only vision in the life of the main character, Ebenezer Scrooge, is to make money at any and all costs. That's his vision. It doesn't matter who that hurts. His family, his friends, even himself. Amassing wealth is Ebenezer Scrooge's only concern. But at the end of the story, as we know, Scrooge has quite a different vision of life and of money. He keeps Christmas by generously using his money to help others. He makes new friends. He reunites with his family and has a new outlook on Christmas and on life itself. What changed? What changed for Ebenezer Scrooge? His vision. His vision for what Christmas was all about changed radically. The messengers of Christmas past, present, and future gave him a new perspective on life. And when his vision changed, his life changed for the better. And then there is that children's classic, How the Grinch Stole Christmas by Dr. Seuss. There is a similar theme in in this delightful tale, isn't there? The Grinch's vision changes from that of a deep bitterness of everything Christmassy to a new joy of what Christmas is all about. It doesn't doesn't happen overnight, but it eventually happens. And by the end of the story, Dr. Seuss tells us that the Grinch's heart grew three sizes as he begins to truly care for the Who's down in Whoville. Do we remember the Grinch's words as he begins to embrace this new vision for Christmas? It came without ribbons. It came without tags. It came without packages, boxes, or bags. Maybe Christmas, he thought, doesn't come from a store. Maybe Christmas, perhaps, 
means a little bit more. I believe that these Christmas stories are classics because there is truth within them. There is truth based on the vision of God that we read about in Isaiah today. It is a vision that becomes our church's calling, not only in the future, but in the here and now. And the calling to live this vision for today starts with the clear understanding that Christmas is about the birth of Jesus, the Savior, the Lord of the world. And you say, well, Scott, we all know that that's simple. Do we? Do we know that and act that out in our Christmas preparations, in our relationships with others? Is Christmas really about the birth of the Savior for us? In Christ lies our hope. In Him lies our peace. In Him lies our joy. And in Him is the source of of all love. One Christmas season, a school teacher in London, England, supervised the construction of a manger scene in the corner of her classroom. Her pupils were delighted to set up the model barn and to cover the floor with real straw. They then arranged the clay figures of Mary and Joseph the shepherds, the wise men, and the animals, all facing a little crib in which a tiny doll was placed representing the infant Jesus. One boy simply could not tear himself away from the puts, we would say, Moravians, from the nativity scene. He kept returning to it. And each time he stood there completely just completely mesmerized by it, but also wearing a puzzled expression on his face. The teacher finally asked him, is there anything bothering you? Do you have a question to ask? Is there something you would like to know about the nativity scene? And with his eyes still glued on the manger scene, the boy slowly said, what I'd like to know is, where does God fit in? And isn't that the question for us this Advent and Christmas? Where does God fit in into our celebrations, in our relationships, in our preparation, in our anticipation? Are we willing to share the beloved Christmas story of where God fits in with others? Are we willing to take up a new vision for Christmas of sharing the love of God in Christ wherever and with whomever God directs us to do so? As we live out this vision, people will notice. It's not a vision of hecticness. It's not a vision of frustration. It's not a vision of not having enough time to do what we need to do. No. It's none of that. It's a vision of hope, love, joy, and peace. I believe that if we live out that vision, people will notice. And they will come. They will come to us. They will come to church wanting to hear of God and wanting to experience God's love. They will want to catch this vision with us and help make this world a more loving forgiving, caring, and hopeful place to live. So let us take hold of the vision. Be the lights of Jesus Christ that glow in the darkness. Let us be the lights that point to the one whose birth we celebrate this season. The reason for the season. He is Jesus. He is the Messiah. He is the light of the world. Let us pray. Oh God, as the world prepares for Christmas, we begin our Advent journey. We recall the events that led to the birth of Jesus. 
And we remember the promise that He will come again. Oh Lord, we thank You for the gift of the Christ child, both in history and in our hearts. Help us, O oh God, to share the good news of Jesus Christ with everyone we know. This we pray in the Savior's name. Amen. Closing hymn is a wonderful Advent tune. Rejoice, re rejoice, believers. Hymn number 200, Stand As We Sing. May the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the communion and fellowship of the Holy Spirit be and abide with you both now and forevermore. Amen.